Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Today we're gonna to talk about five rules for compressing vocals. A couple of weeks ago, I posted three rules for EQing vocals, and this is a follow-up to that, and wouldn't you know it, I'm wearing the same T-shirt. All right, let's dive in. Okay, I'm gonna to try to keep this video quick and snappy, so I'm gonna tell you the rule, briefly explain the rule, and then show you the rule on a vocal. Deal? All right, rule number one, set the vocal level first. Okay, this may seem ridiculously obvious, but a lot of times we'll start working on a mix, putting plugins on something when the level isn't right yet. So take the vocal and move the volume, whether it's through the fader itself or adjusting the gain of the channel, however you wanna do it, to where the vocal is at the level you want. It's okay if certain bits of the vocal are too loud or too quiet, but the overall level is right. The problem people run into is the vocal's too quiet, for example, and then they're trying to do all this compression tricks to it to get it more audible, when in reality they just needed to push the fader up. For this video, I'm using a vocal from my friend Whitney Winkler from an EP I produced a couple of years ago. Let's hit play. We'll rewind a little bit to hear the acoustic guitar leading into this vocal. Let's see where the vocal level is. So you can hear her, and so you would think, great, let's start adding compression. Actually, no, it's a little quiet. So what I'm gonna do is use this trim control at the top of the channel to get her vocal up to, or maybe even a little bit above, the level of that acoustic guitar. She is like a blade of grass In an How long till the others are now that feels like the right level. We had to boost it a little over four decibels to get it to the right place for us to begin. Can you see how if that was four dB quieter, you'd have a lot harder time dialing in the compression? That's rule number one. Rule number two, EQ first if it needs it. I have this rule of thumb when it comes to EQ and compression order. If I like the sound of the track, I'll use compression first. If it needs some fixing, then I'll use EQ to fix whatever needs fixing and then I will compress. Doesn't mean I always compress everything, but on vocals, I generally do. All right, let's listen to this vocal. Let's decide if we like what we got. She is like a plate of grass. I dig it. If anything, there's a little bit of extra mid-range there because she's singing so softly. So I might EQ out some of the mids, but that's it. She is like a plate of grass. She is like a plate of grass. She is like a plate of grass. Reason for that is I know the compression is gonna bring that out more. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit out here with EQ. That vocal feels great, so I'm ready to add the compression. Rule number three, level match. This one's really simple. When you bypass the compressor on a vocal, it should stay at roughly the same level. You don't have to get super nerdy about measuring it, but just generally speaking, as you add compression and the compression turns it down, use the makeup gain on that same compressor to get it back up to the same level. But be careful that you don't go way louder with the compressor. So when I turn the compressor off, the vocal's quiet. When I turn it on, the vocal's louder because we tend to think louder is better. It's just human nature, I think. So make sure that when you bypass the compressor, you're still getting roughly the same volume. That allows you to check to see if you're actually helping or hurting the vocal. All right, we're gonna use just the regular old stock compressor in Studio One for this. Uh, let's go four to one ratio. Let's just leave it at the default settings for now, and I'm just gonna pull the threshold down to just start some compression happening. She is like a plate of grass in an endless sea of she is like a plate of grass. She is like a plate of grass. She is like a plate of She is like a plate of She is like a plate of grass. Okay, that before and after is very similar in volume. One trick, you can look at how much gain reduction is happening. That's the little light that was coming down. Uh, and it was around six to nine-ish dB. So when I was turning it up at about seven and a half dB, I kind of had a visual indication this might be right. And then I listen, of course, and just make sure we're still at roughly the same level. Rule number four, use attack for aggression. There's a setting on most compressors called the attack setting, which tells the compressor how quickly does it clamp onto the signal. Does it do so instantly or does it kind of slowly ramp up to compressing? The attack setting lets us determine that. For vocals, I like to use a faster attack. I tend to like a fairly aggressive amount of compression on the vocal. The sound of a compressed vocal that we're used to hearing in all of our favorite albums, generally, to my ear at least, that sounds like a compressor 
compressor grabbing the vocal pretty quickly. And that's the sound of kind of a modern vocal. So if you find yourself using really slow attack times, maybe that's why your compression doesn't sound quite right. Let's listen to what happens when I take the attack from 100 milliseconds, which is fairly long, down to like one millisecond or shorter. That's the only thing I'm gonna change. Here we go. She is like a plate of grass. She is like a plate of grass. She is like a plate of grass. You see what happened? It got quieter the faster the attack time, meaning there was more compression happening, meaning the very beginning of her phrases more and more of those bits of those beginning phrases are getting squished down, and that's something that I like in a vocal. You can play around with it and see what you like, but that tends to be the sound that I'm going for. Rule number five, adjust release for clarity. The release knob can be a little bit confusing. It's a counterpart to the attack knob, so the attack is how quickly the compressor latches on, the release is how quickly or how slowly it lets go, stopping the compression, right? Um, and the only real way to start to understand how the release works is to spend some time playing with it. Dial in a setting with an attack setting that you like and then move the release around to see what you get. What I found with vocals is as you go longer with the release, meaning a slower time back, you'll see the needle, it'll go like this. On the attack, it'll go wham. And then with the fast release, it goes whoosh, it comes right back. But on a slow release, it kind of goes which means it's holding the volume down for a longer period of time. And if the release is too slow, that needle will just stay down the whole time. It's not necessarily a bad thing, it just means we're not really compressing the vocal, we're just kind of overall turning it down and leaving it down, which may not be what we want. Let me show you. Here's a really, really long release time, almost a full second. She is like a plate of grass. So that last, she stopped singing, it took another like half a second before the thing stopped compressing. Not super helpful. Now if we go really fast with the release, listen to what it sounds like. She is like a plate of grass. So what did you notice? I noticed that there's more clarity in her vocal when I use a faster release. What that means is right now she's singing, she is like a blade of grass. Generally speaking, the compressor is gonna compress the vowels and it's gonna not compress as much the consonants. However, if we have a slow release where it's compressing and the release is taking its sweet time to get back up, then some of those consonant sounds between the vowels can get lost. Now that can, you could use that to your advantage. If you've got a vocalist that has really loud consonant sounds for some reason, maybe a slower release makes sense. But if you wanna maintain clarity, which we tend to wanna do, especially to make that vocal sit right on top of the mix like, well, like I like to have it, then I need probably a faster release time so I hear those consonants. Listen specifically to the consonants that she's singing. I'll start this one at about 100 milliseconds, then I'll pull it down to something faster. Listen to how much more clarity there is when we go with a faster release. She is like a plate of grass. She is like a plate of grass especially on the, the K sound and the word like, uh, it almost disappeared in the first one and came back to life in the second one. And finally, a bonus rule, don't be afraid to have a good amount of compression happening on the vocal. You don't have to have just like two and three dB of gain reduction. It can be six or 10 and still sound really great. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have questions or you wanna see more like this or suggestions for me, leave a comment. Pam and I both keep an eye on those. We watch those, we get feedback from you so we can make videos for you. It's a great, beautiful feedback loop, so let's keep that going. By the way, if you haven't signed up for my email newsletter, it is the place to be and you can get my free five-step mix guide just for signing up. So go to fivestepmix.com, get yourself one. Thanks for watching. See you next week.